What's up, everyone? Welcome to Fan Sports New York Varsity. I'm your host, Frank Langella, joined by my co-host, Marsilio Langella. And Mars, this is our Section 1A Week 2 preview show. We're going to talk about the matchups coming up this weekend. But I want to welcome you to the show. Mars, how's it going, brother? It's going well, man. I think the fact that we are already in Week 2, and last week had a lot of really interesting matchups and games a lot, a lot closer than what a lot of people had actually expected, including us. And I'm just excited that we can just jump right into week two. Absolutely. And again, I want to welcome our audience. We appreciate you guys uh, joining the show. And for this show in particular, we're going to be talking about some of the top matchups in section 1A. And then at the end, we're going to pick all the games. So we are going to discuss all of them. But before we dive into that, make sure if you do like this content, give a thumbs up and subscribe uh, for future content. It really does help the channel, and we appreciate all the support. You can also gain access to our um, to our content via our website at fansportsny.com. And if uh, you would like to donate to our cause, obviously we don't do uh, subscription-based. We are, again, a kind of a grassroots group. Appreciate any donations from our fans, but you can get access to our Patreon um, in the description below as well as our website. Um, but now that that is finished, Mars, let's talk about the games on slate for 1A. Clarkstown South, 1-0 at Lakeland. That's 2-0. That is a league game. Clarkstown North at John Jay Cross River. That is a league game as well. Fox Lane, 0-2 at Nyack. That's 0-1. That is a league game. Sleepy Hollow, 2-0 at Pelt. Who is 2-0? Excuse me. That's also a league game. Rye, 2-0 at Yorktown. That's 2-0. That's a league game. Brewster, 0-1 at Harrison. That's 1-1. That is a league game. Somers, 1-0 at Eastchester, who is 2-0. Kind of a bit of a surprise, and Mayapak is on the bye. So, those are the games on slate. Let's talk about a couple of the biggest matchups. Marks the first one I want to talk about: Clarkstown South, one and zero at Lakeland. That is two and zero. I mentioned it's a league game. Last week, Clarkstown South won versus Harrison in double overtime. A really fantastic game. Lakeland won at Nyack when they were down. They had to come back and ended up winning that game. These two teams don't play each other very often, right? Clarkstown South. 1-0 versus Lakeland. The last time they played each other was in 2019, um, where they won 27-7. to And let's start with Clarkstown South, Mars. Uh, a win in double overtime last week, 38-37. to They had to stop a two-point conversion by Harrison to win the game. Um, they are 4-1 and one on the road last season. Again, bringing a lot of familiar faces back. This was a strong road team last year. And offensively, Mars, they are as explosive as advertised. And, uh, you know, when they don't turn the ball over, um, they're tough to keep out of the end zone. And listen, they're not a downhill run team, but I'm expecting to see some quick bubbles to some skill guys and also take some shots down the field and try to get out on the edge. Um, but I'm interested to see if they are going to try to run a little bit more in between the tackles, use some of their size. Um, it's going to be really interesting, but it all starts obviously with their quarterback and holder. He had 224 yards last week, three touchdowns, um, Obviously, one of their biggest athletes is their wide receiver, uh, Chris Ali. Uh, nine receptions, 134 yards in the touchdown. But to me, the biggest one, Mars, five of those receptions were converting on third down. He was a very reliable target. Chain mover, one of the best players in the class. But another guy, Federico Fitera, we talked about him before, big play threat guy. He had two receptions for 79 yards and a touchdown. He also had a 12-yard rushing touchdown. They have the weapons, but again, to me, I'm interested to see are they going to use their size to try to run a little bit more. A guy like uh, a guy like here, um, 20 carries, 81 yards, and a touchdown. You know, can this front kind of dictate? I like the front up. You know, they have some size. Uh, we know with Somerlad, we know about Ryan, we know about some of these guys that have some size to them. Are they going to try to use that size? to their advantage, but I'm really interested to see how they attack this Lakeland side. I think they stay true to themselves. They want to pass the ball. They want to get the ball out in space to their athletes, but do they sprinkle in a little more downhill running is going to be interesting to me. Defensively, the big thing for me, preventing big plays. Obviously, you know, they gave up some points last week. This week, they're going up against a team that could throw the ball very well. They have weapons on the outside. They got to prevent the big plays out on the edge and to these receivers. Lakeland has wide receivers that can do some major damage and beat man coverage. So, you know, how do they go about this? Are they going to try to pressure the quarterback by bringing stunts and blitzes? Are they going to try to go into max coverage? Interesting, or maybe mix it up. That's going to be an interesting part. Um, Marsh, what are your thoughts on South? 
Yeah, when you look at South, I think the fact that their offense is very efficient. And granted, I think they have the 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 you know explosiveness to make big plays. And you know, when you look at last week's game, they were just super efficient when it came to third down conversions. And, and at the end of the day, that usually wins you games and just gets you in the red zone. And they were capitalizing. I think you said it best. The fact is, if they do right by you know their game plan and just make sure that they do not turn the ball over, then I think they'll be okay because they have the offensive weapons to really show up big time right i think that's going to be their biggest advantage because like you said they have a they have also have a size advantage too where up up front they do have some big guys that can make you know open up some lanes to run in between the tackles but i think the biggest thing for south is going to be their defense right can their defense with, with you know withstand this lakeland pass offense because they do have some receivers that can make big plays and the secondary is going to have to step up i mean at the end of the day i think the secondary is going to be the most tested group on this field because Lakeland has some weapons and South really has to show that their defense is not is no slouch either but they definitely need to show up here or else it's going to be a shootout and that, you, those are always tough games to always just come away victorious you have to really score a lot in order to win this little shootout offensive game so you know it's going to be a tough one but secondary needs to step up big time yeah, I have a feeling this one might be. But let's go to Lakeland, Mars. I talked about Lakeland before the season. I thought this was a team to keep an eye on that might surprise some people. They have not started 2-0 and since 2012. So this is, again, almost 10 years now um, since being starting the season 2-0. and They have not started 3-0 since 2008. So that is 14 years ago trying to do for the first time. When we talk about offensively, Mars. They were definitely more explosive last week compared to week zero. If they can hold up in pass pro, I do think they can do some major damage in the passing game like we talked about. Obviously, it starts with their quarterback as well in Leonard. He's completing 67% of his passes, Mars. He's been pretty darn efficient for touchdowns, including having a rushing touchdown as well. Um, but what surprised me last week is they were actually running the ball with some efficiency. Um, Scaglione last week, it was really solid for them as a dual threat guy. He's a guy who can run the ball. He's a guy who can throw to out of the backfield. Um, but we mentioned those weapons, right? Another guy had a good week last week, Sean Perry, nine catches, 80 yards and a touchdown. Anthony Jennings is another guy, big play guy for them. He had four catches, 80 yards and a touchdown. They have weapons and those were just two of them, but they have some guys that if you can hold up and pass pro up front, and I do think South is going to try to be somewhat aggressive or mix it up. Um, you know, they can do some damage out on the edge. I do think Lakeland has that kind of talent. Defensively, Mars, remember, they were down 14 nothing last week and had to come back. The defense really stepped up after those 14 points. They forced three INTs last week. Anthony Jennings had an INT um, for now two straight games. And I think the defense has good speed to them. I talk about that linebacker crew. Um, I do think they can keep up with some of the speed uh, that South has, but uh, do they have enough speed for those wide receivers is going to be the question. Um, and so the DBs, we might talk about South DBs are going to be in, you know, need to step up, but so does Lakeland's and uh, they're going up against some studs. But what can help the secondary, Mars? Defensive line getting pressure, right? Defensive line getting pressure up front. Maybe they send some of these stud linebackers they have, you know, Carroll's had 27 tackles over the last two weeks. I do think horizontally when they try to get out the edge, Lakeland will run with them, but can they hang with them vertically is going to be the big question, especially if South tries to run the ball downhill. Mars, what are your thoughts on Lakeland? Yeah, when you look at Lakeland, I think the they are somewhat similar to South when it comes to how explosive they could be. I think they have a lot of weapons on this squad, and I think that if you give them some room, they're definitely going to make some big plays. Um, the biggest thing to me is going to be uh, the fact that you know, the offensive line needs to really step it up. And I said the same thing about South, and I think they're not that far off from each other. I think the really the game breaker to me is going to be the performance of the offensive line for both teams. Because if, you know, from the South, South South's perspective, if they were to open up lanes on the inside, that will benefit their offense. And the same thing for Lakeland. If you can now open up the lanes and keep the quarterback upright, you're going to get a lot of opportunity, especially in the passing game. So the question is going to be, how does the offensive line play for either squad? And that will kind of open up the game for, for both groups. I mean, defensive line-wise, for, for, you know, for Lakeland, I think they need to make big plays, right? If they do, if they can really stuff the run and really try to bring some pressure on the passing game, then I think they'll have a good chance. But it's going to be, depend like I said, dependent on how do both of these squads do, especially on the front lines, on the trenches. Yeah, and this Lakeland secondary has been pretty ball hawkish. They forced turnovers in 
now two straight games. Um, but my matchup, Mars, I'm looking at these Clarkstown South wide receivers versus this Lakeland secondary. We know how explosive these wide receivers can be on South. The secondary of Lakeland have now been forcing turnovers in multiple weeks. We're going to see kind of which one wins that matchup. All right, let's go to the next game. And this is another interesting one. Sleepy Hollow 2-0 and at Pelham who is also 2-0. This is a league game. Sleepy Hollow 1 versus Morristown, uh, team in New Jersey. Pelham uh, 1 versus Clarkstown North. Um, historically, Sleepy Hollow is actually 4-2 versus Pelham. They have a winning record versus them. They've also won two. Uh, Pelham has won two straight, though. Um, and the two, uh, you know, the combined score for that, Pelham is up 62-21, to right? So it's been a little lopsided these last two games that Pelham has won. And last year they won 27 to nothing. But let's start with Sleepy. Right, they're 2 0 for the first time since 2014. So it's been eight years. They have not been 3 0 since 2013. So trying to create a little bit of history. Those have been eight, nine years now. Um, and offensively, we know Pelham is a physical team. And they have a dude in Luke Green who has been absolutely brutal to block um, on Pelham. And he can really blow up your game plan. So, to me, I'm looking at starting up front, right, for this offensive line. They're going to need to hold up. They're going to need to, you know, you're not going to shut down Green. It's really hard to do. But how can this interior offensive line handle that guy, along with some of the other physical defensive linemen? But I do have to give some praise to that quarterback, Mahood. I think he's he's improved dramatically from last season. Um, no question about it throwing the football, his mechanics. You know, last week he hit Dylan Gonzalez for a touchdown. They have multiple backs that they have turned to these last two weeks. Um, and Mariah, Soto, Richardson, they have all scored um, last week. Again, getting the ball out of your hands quickly, not allowing this pass rush to get to you is going to be huge. I do think it's going to be tough to run the ball consistently in between the tackles. So we're going to see if maybe some of this passing game can open up some opportunities in the run game, keep the defense honest. Defensively, Mars, they have allowed zero points so far in these last two games. They have been pretty sound. They rallied to the ball, and they have prevented the big plays, and that is going to have to continue for them to pull off this upset because they're going up against a bigger front with a very strong rush attack. They'll send multiple backs to you. The quarterback can run. So I do think that Sleepy being undersized, they're going to have to be very aggressive and stunt, and they're going to have to spy on these quarterback uh, on the quarterback room because these quarterbacks can run. If they break contain, if Reen can get outside, it's going to spell some bad, bad news for this team. So these linebackers are going to have to step up big time, Mars. What are your thoughts on Sleepy Hollow? Yeah, when it comes to Sleepy Hollow, I think the fact that they're 2-0 is actually very impressive, and I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad to see that they are stepping up their game, right, in the, from previous years and how we saw. The biggest thing for me is going to be the offensive line play. I mean, they're going to have the toughest challenge yet, and it's going to be really up to the the play of this of the Hog Mollies up front to really establish some sort of a run game as well as give the skill players some time, right? I think the biggest issue that's going to be is, is obviously the toughest road is the, is, a running, is the run attack, but if they can open up the pass a little bit it will give the run game some more room to work because that means they're gonna have to you know Pelham's gonna have to you know give some give some more coverage in the backfield and say hey you know we're gonna have to depend on the defensive line to make all the big plays the offensive line is gonna dictate how this game goes whether it's gonna be more in the positive for the offense or it's gonna be a trucking Defensively, I think it's the same thing. I mean, the front is really going to have to make like make a lot of moves, and they're going to have to send the heat. I mean, at the end of the day, most of these te- most of, most teams that can really run the game, you have to be able to you know, slow them down at least. And Pelham has the ability to, to do that. So Sleepy Hollow is going to have to you know send the heat, slow it down, and really try to force them to go into the passing game. Yeah. Uh, Going to Pelham Mars offensively, we talked about this rush attack has been really strong. And, you know, they lost a lot of players last season going into this season. And I've been pretty impressed. And there's a lot of credit to this offensive line and coaching staff for putting this thing together. They have a couple backs that have helped lead this charge in uh, Johnson and Myers. Johnson, he's kind of the more versatile uh, player to me. You can kind of send him out as a wide receiver as well. He's had two rushing touchdowns and a receiving touchdown this season. Myers had three rushing touchdowns. And their quarterback, to me, the X factor, the spark plug of this offense is their quarterback, Reen. He's had four passing touchdowns, one rushing touchdown. A guy that they've utilized, Alessio Johnson, he had two receiving touchdowns last week. But to me, this offense is a run first, you know, in this game, run first, use their size and strength to their advantage, and then they're passing off of that, I do think using those two backs, using the quarterback design runs um, is a lot to handle for, for a team that's in Sleepy Hollow. It's going to be undersized compared to Pelham. So, you know, I think Green could have a, a really big outing in this game. 
if they can block up front defensively. This defensive front seven, again, has been very disruptive so far the first couple weeks. We talked about Luke Green already a bunch of times, and with good reason last week, Mars, 10 tackles, 3 sacks. Um, so can they match the physicality that they had against Clarkstown North last week? If they can, I think they could be, again, very disruptive in the run game. Um, and I think this unit has been strong. They've allowed 14 points all season, um, which is an average of 7 points. Can they generate pressure and protect the edge? Because I do think Sleepy Hollow is going to try to attack the edge of this defense because running in between the tackles is going to be difficult. Mars, what are your thoughts on Pelham? Yeah, Pelham, I think, is is showing a very good job at really establishing several years of success, even after losing a lot of guys. And we've we talked highly about Pelham being a very gritty and tough team for the past few years. And they really have been uh, they're really just showing up and, and you know showing everyone out that they are not just going away in the dark. I mean, a lot of people thought that Pelham was just going to fade away after that. Really, uh, you know, the big year they like they had they've had some years where they like had some solid yeah, last year they and, had a big year, and, and they thought they were just going to disappear. But Pelham clearly showed that they're not just going to go away. Um, the biggest thing for me when I'm looking at this team is obviously they have multiple ways of defeating you, but mainly in the run attack. I mean, you have two running backs in Johnson and Myers who are a dual threat type of dudes that can really it's like a, a lightning and thunder that can really do a lot like, against any defense. And obviously, Green at quarterback has just been phenomenal. So. Yeah, Reen, yeah, Reen, sorry. I, I think that you have really a lot of guys that can make big plays for you. I think the fact that this offense has multiple people that you have to look out for makes them dangerous because defenses are not going to have to key in on somebody, and if you don't get enough guys to key in on all of them, then all of a sudden that one of them is going to have a great day. Defensively, I mean... I think the front seven has been so nasty, and obviously the front the front four has just been causing so much mayhem for all offenses. So it's really going to be dependent on them and how they step up, cause some pass rush disruption, and just cause some issues, especially in the run. And I think that you know Sleepy Hollow is going to have some tough outing against these guys, and that's why I said the offensive line is going to have to have a day right, in order for them to really try to move the ball effectively. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens here. Yeah, my matchup to watch is Luke Green of Pelham and this interior of the defensive line versus the interior offensive line of Sleepy Hollow. I think that's going to be huge. Um, I know everyone's focusing on quarterbacks, running backs, wide receivers, you know, and the skill guys, but I'm looking in the trenches. Um, it's going to show can Sleepy Hollow keep up with the physicality they're going to need to to win this game. Let's go to the next game, Mars. Brewster 0-1 at Harrison, who is 1-1. Another league game. Both these teams coming off tough losses last week. Brewster lost to Ryan, a very close game at the end. Harrison lost to Clarkstown South in double overtime. Both these teams trying to rebound. And when you look historically, Harrison is 3-1 versus Brewster. They've won two straight, including a win last year in another close game, 28-20. But let's start with Brewster. Again, I mentioned tough loss last week, um, but I thought there was a lot of positives from last week. But they also suffered some injuries. Guys went in and out in that game. You don't know the status of them cutting into this week. We don't get a weekly updates about injuries, but they did get some guys beat up. And when you look offensively, Mars, it obviously starts with their quarterback, Massimo Perello, who did miss time during that game last week, which really hurt the offense. He did come back, but he had 74 yards rushing, and a touchdown, 84 yards passing and two touchdowns. He's the spark plug, in my opinion, for this team. Um, he's a guy who can throw the ball, especially off of play action, I think is when it's at his best. And he can darn darn sure run the ball, um, but he's not alone. And if you saw that running back, he had a receiving touchdown. He's another versatile guy where he can run routes out of the backfield and a shifty guy who runs hard uh, running the football. But they have other guys, guys like Sanchez, guy like Walters, who had a kick return touchdown last week. They have some weapons, and I do believe they can be effective passing the ball off of play action. Now, obviously, run is the number one priority, and you're going to see, again, some option stuff, some physical running attack, where you're going to get the running back going, you're going to get some quarterback design runs, and obviously that is the number one priority, but that play action pass could open things up for them um, against Harrison, who did give up some big pass plays last week. So, you know, that's going to be something to look at. But Brewster is a more physical team, so we're going to see, you know, do they try to test the physicality of Harrison. Uh, defensively, for the most part, I thought they were strong for three quarters. They only allowed six points through three quarters, Mars, um, or towards late in the third quarter. And then things kind of fell apart. I think the struggle was they gave up some big plays in that fourth quarter, and Harrison has the speed to hit big plays. So they have to be aware and they have to be disciplined and not preventing guys from getting too much space and not getting to the outside. And, you know, 
They're not the same pass attack that they saw last week. Obviously, Harrison runs the ball more, but they have some tempo. They have the option game, and they have a big front, especially in the interior of that offensive line. Brewster needs to stay with their keys, right? That's going to be a huge, huge importance. And can they keep up? with the tempo um, that Harrison is going to bring. Uh, Mars, what are your thoughts on Brewster? Yeah, Brewster, I think, offensively has shown a lot. Uh, has shown us a lot. I mean, I really like the way you know that Pirello had played. I think he has you know a multi you know threat type of quarterback being being able to run the ball and pass the ball pretty well. Um, and I think that he, uh, defenses are going to have an issue really trying to key in on him and knowing what he's going to do next. But I do agree with you. I think the play action pass is definitely an, an option for Bruce to make big plays. Right? They they have the ability to make some runs, but I think when they start kind of developing a run. Uh, I mean, a rush offense and then opening up with play action, that's where the big plays are going to happen. Yeah. I think that's going to be what opens up this Brewster offense. And defensively, I, I agree with you. I think the issue that Brewster has is stopping the big play. I think yeah. a lot of times they give up too many yards and all of a sudden momentum swings in the other direction. You really need to you know, slow the game up. Force offenses to have to bring, drive all the way down the field, and, and most likely when you're playing against you're playing against Harrison, you're gonna have to force some losses right on early downs and try yeah. to force them to have to take a big shot, and then you gotta capitalize on that. Yeah. I, I think at the end of the day, Brewster has the ability to do this, but they need to really step up defensively to give their offense more opportunities to keep scoring. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, going to Harrison Mars, this was another team that was leading for the majority of the game last week and ended up losing um, in double overtime. Offensively, Mars, I think this offensive line deserves a lot of credit. You know, this rush attack was, has been really explosive and strong the first two weeks. Ranello and Haynes, they deserve a lot of credits. And this is another group that has multiple guys who can hurt you, um, hurt a defense. Uh, offensively, uh, Barcella, he had 102 yards last week, three touchdowns. Marinelli had a touchdown uh, last week. Uh, Joe Krupe had a receiving touchdown last week. Again, multiple backs. Their quarterback, Citro, 9 of 24 for 119 yards and a touchdown. Obviously, to me, if Harrison's throwing the ball 24 times, I think it favors the other team. Um, and Harrison knows that, hey, you know, they want to be more efficient, right? 9 of 24, um, you're under uh, 50% completion percentage. You want to be a little bit more efficient in the passing game. That's something definitely they would like to work on. Um, but to me, you know, if Harrison's throwing it over 20 times, the other team is probably in a favorable situation, right? Um, so Harrison wants to be ahead of the chains. They want to use their tempo. They have one of the best big play guys in the section in Chris McLaughlin. He had, uh, I think it was six receptions for 71 yards. He also had an INT. I mean, they have weapons. They have absolute weapons. They can utilize a bunch of them. Uh, I think the run game obviously is the number one thing, getting into tempo and then being ahead of the chains makes it easier on the quarterback to, to create completions, right? Because the defense is guessing. What are they going to do? They're going to run, they're going to pass. But when you have tempo and you're ahead of the chains, that's when big plays can happen. I do think Harrison, again, has that opportunity against Bruce, who showed they will give up the big play in the passing game, at least they did last week. Another big threat that they have, Mars, they have a real advantage special teams-wise. I think actually two of these guys have, you know, both programs have strong kickers here. Obviously, Nick Reed, he had a game-tying 30-yard field goal as time expired pretty much um, last week. He's an absolute weapon. He's a guy that when drive stall, you can get points. Uh, when you get into, you know, close to the red zone, which is absolutely huge. Defensively, the number one thing is stopping the run, right? With Infuso and Pirello running the ball, they kind of have a two-headed monster running that. Brewster, again, has some thickness up front, right? They're not tall, giant figures, but they have some size there. And they're going to try to utilize some of the, again, Harrison's got some good size, you know, interior-wise. On the outside, they're more athletic. So are they going to try to run right at them? It's going to be really interesting. Can they hold up? And the Brewster play action, again, is strong. I discipline with these DBs are going to be extremely important. They need to do a better job of, uh, of protecting the edge of their defense. Mars, what are your thoughts on Harrison? Yeah, Harrison offense, I feel like, you know, we always, when you're looking at Harrison and this type of, type of scheme, a lot of times people always say, well, it's not going to be as powerful. It's not going to be as explosive. But Harrison has shown that they have the ability to be explosive in this, you know, this, I guess you would call it classical style of scheme. But I think at the end of the day, Harrison has a lot of skill players that can make big plays here, especially on the, the rushing side. But I do agree with you. I think they do need to be more efficient on the passing game. So at least then, if they are put in the passing scenarios, they can make more plays right? and they can get, you know, get ahead of the sticks. But I, I think the biggest thing they have to do 
do is really try to get positive yards on first down and so on. So at least if they get into the third down scenario, it's a third and short. It's not going to be yeah. as, you know, and not a, it won't be as difficult to get that few yards, right, especially in this type of scheme. And, and then when they're passing, it's not going to be, you know, dramatic where they have to make a big play, right? It's always about getting positive yardage. And I do agree with you, special teams for Harrison is really impressive. Defensively, I think it's going to be a really tough time to be, try to stop this rush, or this rush attack that Brewster has. I mean, at the end of the day, like, I think... If the if they can stop the the advancements of some of these uh, playmakers, especially on the run, then I think Harrison will get the chance to keep trying to slow the game down in their favor. I think that's going to be what's the biggest thing, and the X factor. They're going to have to send the heat, and unfortunately, it might leave the secondary in a tough spot. But that is going to have to be somewhere. I think they're going to have to try to stop the run because Brewster's rush attack has just been so impressive. You're going to have to do something to stop that. It's going to be up to the front seven to make some plays. Yeah, and you know, Harrison likes to use tempo, right? They're not a slow team, they're a fast team, but if they win early downs, like you said, that's when the tempo starts, right? If they get into second, third, and long, it slows the game down, which is not something they're, and get them in a pass situation, which is not something that's ideal for them. Um, the matchup I'm looking at, Mars, I'm looking at this Harrison offensive line versus the Brewster front seven is my matchup to watch. Obviously, going to be another trench. Trench watch. That's what we should really call it. It's going to be the trench warfare watch um, in this game. Let's go to the next one. Somers, 1-0 at Eastchester, who is 2-0. Another league game. Somers won versus John J. Cross River last week. Eastchester won versus Mayapack in a pretty, I thought, a pretty big upset. Um, and we'll get into that more. But historically... Somers is four and one versus East Chester. They have won four straight, but the last time they played was eight years ago in 2014. It has been a while. And let's start with Somers. Obviously, it was not the prettiest game last week, um, especially for offensive fanatics. Um, they were down 7-6 at halftime. If you look at the offensive side of the ball, they were very rusty. And, and it was a mistake-filled performance. It was kind of surprising to see to be quite honest, but um, not shocking, right? Because Mars, when we talked about it last week, this game, you know, I talked about, hey, you know, there could be some rust coming in here, right? When, you know, you look at Cross River, they lost uh, to Yorktown. They beat up on Cross River last year. You might be going in there thinking, and I'm not saying that they just completely overlooked them, but like, hey, you know, it, it, it might not be too bad. And then you realize, hey, we're not as sharp as that we need to be offensively. Um, and there was a lot of mistakes, especially in the first half. March, two fumbles, two INTs, penalty brought back a, a long touchdown. You know, very on Somers like. But I look at this offense going into this week. I'm anticipating that they are going to be better this time around. Offensive line wise, they're going to have a size advantage this week. And I believe they're going to try to be a little bit more balanced. They're going to run the ball with Savino and Doss, who had a touchdown last week. Um, quarterback Fitz Simons last week. Again, it wasn't. You know, that they couldn't hit passes, right? I think it was 18 to 26, but 73 yards. Everything was kind of really short. Um, they missed out on some opportunities. He did have a passing touchdown. And I do think this week, if they can run the ball a little bit more, especially in between the tackles, kind of attack downhill a little bit, even out on the edge, but really attack downhill, um, use your strength to your advantage. I do think Fitz Simons is going to have a bounce back game in this one and be more explosive in this offense defensively we talked about how rusty the offense was right mars but the defense was strong and this is what a sign of a good team does that when one side of the unit may not be there that day the other other unit can pick them up and that's what the defense did i mean they were up against a very strong uh star filled offense and, and john jay and they were led by their linebacker luke kennedy who had nine tackles including three tackles for loss and i think they're going to hold up pretty strong in the tackle box versus the run John J. Cross had a real tough time running the ball. I do think East Chester in between the tackles is going to also struggle to run the ball consistently. And I do think they're going to try to attack the edge and use rollouts, sprint outs um, on this defense. So to me, the edge defenders of Somers is going to be huge, right? We know the secondary is going to have to match up against some of these skill guys in East Chester, but the Somers edge players cannot let these quarterbacks just run out to the outside of the pocket and kind of use this run pass option where if the pass is not there, they'll run the ball. Right, so that's going to be really important, Mars. What are your thoughts on Somers? 
Yeah, Summer's game last week was actually very interesting. I, ne I didn't actually expect it to happen. We uh, we both thought that Summer's was going to have a pretty solid day, but I, mean, I know you said it would probably be a little bit closer. I didn't expect it to be as close. I, I did say that it would be up to the offensive line of, of, Cro of Cross River to really step up. Right, uh, and I think that you know when you're looking at it, they, they, it was it was a battle, right? It was a fight, um, and I think when you're looking at Summers' offense, I think the fact that they had so many turnovers definitely slowed them up. And you're right, they looked rusty. They didn't look like they were, you know, either one they didn't they didn't you know consider you know that this was a the team to their level, and all of a sudden they were shocked, um, or they, they maybe they're just rusty in general. But there was a lot of turnovers. There was a lot of messiness. And that was partly the reason why this offense was just felt like they weren't ready yet. And I don't think that's going to happen two weeks in a row. I don't think Somers is going to, you know, be is turnover fest again. I think you're going to have an offensive line that's going to be fired up to try to move people around. You're going to have Matt Fitzsimons is going to be, you know, I think he was already solid, like efficiently, right? But 18 out of, for 26, but there was no big plays. It was just, yeah. like you said, small game. And I think that Matt Fitzsimons is going to have a day. I think he's going to have a big day and it's going to be up to the offensive line to give him some time, which I'm sure they will. And, and obviously running the ball is going to obviously open up what you can do on the offensive end. And I think that's going to be the priority for Somers. Defensively, like you said, I think that they were pretty solid. The question is going to be, can they keep contained, right? And I think that's going to be what is going to dictate how this game goes. I think the front seven of Somers is impressive, and they're good. But they just need to continually grind out these games and get their offense back on the field because I can guarantee you, if you give Somers more than one chance to score, they're going to be you know, pretty consistent on getting in the end zone. So I think Somers has an advantage here. But we got to see what happens. Let's talk about Eastchester. One of the big surprise wins last week. Um, they won versus Maypac 13 to seven. And just kind of put in context. You know, when you look historically between Eastchester and Maypac, they never played each other since I, it had to be before 2004 when Max Preps even started taking in beta, right? And so it just kind of shows you how impressive the Eastchester win was because Maypac is a much bigger school than them. Um, and they also had a very large, I talked about Somers size advantage. Maypac had a very large size advantage versus Eastchester, but that, you know, Eastchester showed that, Hey, we can bump and grind and we want, right? So that was a huge victory for them. They're two and for the first time in seven years. They have not started a season three, and since 2015, right? So that's also the seven year mark. Um, and we talk about offensively last week was tough running the ball in between the tackles. I think they're going to run into a, a, a same situation here. It's not going to be easy to get them. Um, and so the offensive line has got to do the best they can to try to move some of these guys. It's really more sealing them off. I don't think they're going to blow these guys off the line of scrimmage, but can you seal them, right? Can you get your butt in the hole? Can you get the shoulders turned? It's going to be really important technique wise for this offensive line and Dom Sparandino, their running back, you know, he's a very slippery runner. He's got good explosiveness and speed. He's going to really have to go north and south and get as many yards as he can, right? He can't hang out doing, you know, east and west too much because, you know, Somers, is they're, they're pretty disciplined defensively, right? You're not going to find too many creases and break contained too often. So really, you got to get north and south once you make your first move or you're not going to get much yard yardage. Um but I do got to give a lot of credit to the quarterback, Frankie Provenzali. He goes a quarterback, he goes the wide receiver. Had to really stay at the quarterback spot last week due to injury. But he had a rushing touchdown. He had a passing touchdown. We talk about the other quarterback slash wide receiver and Dia versa Herbert. He got banged up last week. Not sure of his status. He's a very important athlete for them. But, you know, Aiden Schultz, he led the team with six catches and 62 yards. Michael Provenzale, who's Frankie's brother, had a receiving touchdown from him, which was a nice moment. Um, they're going to have to move their quarterbacks, Mars. We talked about it. Um, if Frankie's the quarterback, they're going to have to do a lot of sprint out, roll out, get out on the edge. Because if he stays in that pocket, Mars, um, you know, the Somers defense is going to come after him. Um, and they're going to get some hits on him. And it's going to be a long day. Um, so I do think they got to come out and spread. They got to use motions. They got to try to beat some of the man coverage. If Somers is bringing heat, um, they're going to have to find these. They're not just going to be able to sit back and throw bombs. I don't think the offensive line can hold up against some of these front guys too often, but roll out sprint outs, um, can help. They can help. And so kind of moving the platform, getting these out athletes out on the edge, is going to be huge defensively they were a bend but don't break last week i mean they rallied and they were aggressive they caused negative plays in the run game there were times that things kind of you know leaked but for the most part they made big plays when they needed to and, and give credit to owen bloom mccarthy sparandino had that interception to end the game last week you know they're gonna have to keep everything in front right 
don't let Somers hit these big plays because when Somers feels confident offensively, if Fitz Simons is really starting to get comfortable, bad things are going to happen, right? So the big thing to me is, you know, they did a really good job with their athletes out on the edge. They, didn't, they prevented as many big plays as they could um, last week, and they gave themselves a chance to win. It's going to be similar in this situation. Prevent the big plays, right? Don't give up too many 20 plus yarders. Don't change field position. Force them to be efficient down the field, right? I do think obviously this is a jump up in competition, um, but you know that's that's going to be their best formula. Mars, what are your thoughts on East Chester? Yeah, I mean when the you look at East Chester, I really thought that they did. Uh, I guess a, a thing that most people didn't expect them to do, uh, which was you know beat Mayapack, what a team that a school that program that's what nearly twice the size that they are. I, I mean, granted, I don't have the specific numbers in front of me, but I know that Mayapack is the biggest school in A, right? And East Chester is not on the uh, top not, three. Yeah, yeah East Chester is one of the schools. Yeah, and that's the point. East Chester is one of the smallest schools in A. So, by a number standpoint, East Chester is not supposed to be the team that beats them, right? And I think this was a very impressive win for East Chester. And they definitely shocked a lot of people. I know that they shocked both me and you when we made our picks from APAC, right? Yeah. So, at the end of the day, you got to give them a lot of credit. And really, when you're looking at it, offensively, I thought they have some playmakers. They have some guys that can make some big plays. The, inst- the, the, the running game is really what's going to have to drive this game going forward but the problem is going to be you're facing off against a very good somers front seven right and the question is going to be whether or not this offensive line will open up some lanes and i think trying to get to the outside trying to get as many yards as possible going up going up north instead of like you said instead of going sideways because you need to get as many yards as possible against this very fast very efficient defense of somers the question is going to be obviously how well of a game does Frankie Provenzale have? Um, and I think, like you said, get him in the outside. Get him some room yeah. to run. Get him on the sprint outs. Get him in some spots where he can try to make a play. And I think that you'll get some movement on the on the ball. And it's going to be really up to the defense then to try to slow down this Somers offense. Because at the end of the day, the offensive line of Somers, I think, had a tough, tough outing last week. I think they're going to try to be like I said before. Um, they're going to be they're going to be angry, right? I think they're going to be looking to try to move some people, and I think it's going to be tough for this East Chester defense defensive front to slow them down. But it, it's going to have to be a battle of the trenches, man. If they can try to you know get on the same level as Somers' uh, talent and size wise, I know that's going to be tough. But if they can, then at least they could try to slow down the the impact. I think, like you said before, limit the big plays. Make them have to drive down the field, you know, a little by little to get there. Don't yeah. let them just make a big play and score, right? The more chances you get on offense, the more chances you slow down Somers and tire them out means that you can get more chances for your guys to try to score some points. Uh, my matchup to watch, I'm looking at these East Chester wide receivers. I mentioned a few of them, talented individuals versus this Somers defensive backs. They like to be very aggressive. They like to send stunts, and at times, they will put their DBs on an island to play man coverage, and we're going to see, can East Chester take advantage of that, or will Somers win that matchup? Let's go to the game of the week, Mars. We have Rye 2-0 and at Yorktown, who is also 2-0. and Lee game, Rye had a big win versus Brewster being down. Yorktown kind of surprising some people as well. They had a win versus Fox Lane. When you look historically, Rye is 6-3 and versus Yorktown. They have won two straight Last time they played was the COVID year um, a couple seasons ago. But let's start with Rye. It was a very slow start for them last week, Mars. I kind of talked about it in the preview show last week. I was worried about a young team after a big win on the road at Cornwall, how they will come out versus Brewster. And it kind of showed um, this this past week, right? They were down 23-6 to six late in the third. Um, but... This is the big positive I took, right? The resolve. The resolve that Rye had um, to come back and win that game. A lot of young teams will kind of fold. Um, they'll throw in the towel. But they did not. They kept fighting, which to me shows a lot of resolve. And offensively, Rye, again, they're starting to show that they can beat you multiple ways. But make no mistake, this pass attack, to me, feels like their number one option. And it's becoming really deadly. And their quarterback, A.J. Miller-Mars, look at some of these numbers through the first two weeks including week zero, excuse me, 657 yards passing, eight total touchdowns to two INTs. Um, Really strong start to the season for the young man. And some of their weapons, you know, uh, two of them that shoot off the page, but they have a bunch of guys that they go to. Shepard Griffiths last week, six receptions for 120 yards. Rafferty McSweeney, he had six receptions, 110 yards and two touchdowns last week. 
Um, Barlett is another one. They have multiple guys that they can go to. And again, I mentioned they can hurt you multiple ways. A guy that's not talked about a lot, you know, we, the, the passing game has been really flashing some of these receivers. Their running back, Tommy Richardson, 92 yards and a touchdown. He had 100 yards the week before. Um, you know, they have a back who's, who's kind of, you know, been picking up that mantle. And when I talk about all these weapons, Mars, who deserves a lot of the credit? The offensive line. The offensive line uh, led by Iluiano, um, and I pro- apologize for butchering his name, but this offensive line has done a really solid job, especially in pass pro. And they have been versatile guys. They're not giant hulking offensive linemen, but they're scrappy. And you know what? They move their feet and they don't give up a lot of, uh, they don't give a lot of disruption. Right. And, and that's huge for an offense. And, and they're, these skill guys are taking advantage of this offensive line who had to replace a bunch of kids. Right. So a lot of credit to them defensively. I do think this unit is probably farther away than their offensive unit. It's still a group that is growing as a unit, trying to find some consistency. Um, they played big in the fourth quarter last week, and they're only allowed seven points after they were down, again, 23-6 to six, uh, after that four-minute mark where they returned a kick return for a touchdown. Um, but they have multiple players that, again, contribute to this unit. It's not kind of like a one-man show. Multiple guys really come to the, to the fray. And Kesner last week had a big game in six tackles, two sacks. We know about Sirak. Um which I got his name right now. Shout out to uh, shout out to his family for pointing out how to say his name correctly. Um, he had seven tackles and a sack. And uh, Gonzalez had a good game. I right, had six tackles. Guazo, he's a guy who's been pretty active these la- these first two weeks of the year. Um, they have multiple guys who can contribute, but definitely finding consistency is going to be big. You know, they gave up some big plays last week versus Brewster. Um, they're going to have to be a little more disciplined this time around. They can't get down like they did last week. Um, Mars, what are your thoughts on Rye? You know, when you look at Rye, I, I was actually in, like almost shocked, like complete shock when I saw some of the score updates. Because like when you when you look at Rye, they had so much, they have so much, you know, uh, you know, talent and weapons on this squad that it was actually really surprising how 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 slow of a start they had, but. Like you said, man, I think the determination is impressive. Like the fact that they didn't give up, they kept going, they kept fighting, and they came back, right? They made the, they amounted to that, the amazing comeback that they did, and it was really impressive. And I told you last week, I said that even the week before in the preview, AJ Miller is a scary dude, right? And you can see that by the stats you just mentioned before, but you can just see by the way he plays, right? He plays not afraid, right? And he's making a lot of big plays for this yeah. team. And obviously this past offense has been just super impressive for me. And I, I think that, you know, Rye offensively has a lot of dangerous guys around AJ Miller. And they have a lot of just the ways that they can get that, you know, who can beat you, right? I think AJ Miller is the guy that everyone's looking at right now. And I, I think that he'll have another solid game here just because he's just been so dominant. If you give him time, he will carve you up. Right, but the run game has been really good, and a lot of it has to do with the offensive line. Like you said, they, this Rye offensive line has been very impressive. They may not be the biggest dudes out there, but they've been the grittiest and the toughest. And I really do applaud them for that because, as an offensive line guy myself, I think it's always good to applaud your own line when they're opening up the lanes and protecting your skill players. Right? And I think they've yeah. just been very good, very well coached, and I just think that they are been they've been the driving force of this offense. And for the defensive side, I think the big thing is, just like you mentioned, don't give it the big plays. I feel like last week, last week yeah, we saw many. basically too many times where they, the, they, you know, teams would just be able to move the ball so easily. And I think that if you slow the game up, right, allow your allow your guys to get some rest, or allow allow the defense, you know, uh, you know, allow your guys to really just bring the pressure and slow up this game. The more times you get an offense, the more you're going to score because you have a high powered offense. And I think the same thing that you said before. If you give your town the ability to get into the red zone so easily, they're going to capitalize on it more often, and their defense is solid enough that they will cause issues for you guys, right? And they will kind of slow up your game. So it's going to be up to the defense of Rye to slow up your town because if they don't, they might not make make that comeback. Let's talk about your town. And I got to say, Mars, it feels like there's some magic with this team. Uh, there's got some veterans on this. Um, a bunch of young players as well. They have a decent mix between the two. Um, and it just feels like there's a little bit of magic. And looking at the offensive side of the ball, cannot talk about the offense of Yorktown without mentioning Justin Mirellis, who's I, I just put the word athlete, right? He lines up quarterback, running back, wide receiver. He can do pretty much 
everything for you. He's one of the you know biggest surprises um, for people outside of your town. Your town raved about this young man when I talked to him before the season. Mars, he has over 500 total yards of offense uh, the first two weeks of the year from week zero and week one, four touchdowns. Um, he has been very impressive, a guy who, again, you can throw to, he can run the ball, um, he'll pass. But make no mistake, the ball is going to be in his hands a bunch, and he is their biggest playmaker. Um, but another guy who's been impressive is the other quarterback they bring in. They run a two-quarterback system, Gonzalez. Mars. Last week, 12-17, 234 yards and a touchdown. He was much more efficient. I talked about the efficiency from this young man going from week to week. He was pretty darn efficient last week, and he had some big plays in the passing game. And, again, I'm looking to – I anticipate seeing some heavy looks, running the ball with Myrellis, relying on this offensive line with guys like Broussage to try to move people. I think you're going to see heavy dosage of Myrellis, who's gotten a lot of carries the first two weeks of the season. I looked at to see that continue and then kind of hit some pass plays as, you know, kind of a complimentary to that, to guys like Constantine, Costello, Kane. Um, you know, they – they have done a solid job of being pretty balanced and the efficiency of Gonzalez along with the athleticism of Myrellis, that tandem is a pretty strong one, Mars, um, if they can keep that consistency up and if that offensive line can block up front, which Rye has shown over the first two weeks, again, that you could hit some big plays on them, right? This is a young defense still trying to figure things out. You know, there are some plays to be made. Um, so let's see if they can take advantage. Defensively, Mars, last week they forced three INTs, they need the secondary. We talked about the weapons that Rye has, especially in the passing game. Irelis had an INT. Weissman had an INT. Um, Vogel had an INT for a touchdown. This secondary is going to have to play huge this week because these weapons are deadly, um, and they can hit big plays on pretty much anybody. And can this secondary hold up? There are other guys like Ferrone. He had 12 tackles last week. He was a big – Kane had a sack. Forty had a sack. What can help in secondary, Mars? We talked about it getting pressure on the quarterback without trying to bring stunts, right? But we know Yorktown likes to be aggressive. I anticipate that they're going to stunt and try to blitz, get to A.J. Miller, don't let him be comfortable, but that's going to put these DBs on an island, Mars, against some of these scary wide receivers. So we will see, can they hold up, Mars? What are your thoughts on Yorktown? Yeah, Yorktown I really think is, is you know, the the per- – I guess you would say the progress or the explosiveness of this offense is really going to round you know, Justin Myrellis, right? He's just a pure athlete. He can do, he can basically do it all for you. And I think that he has just been so impressive so far, having more, what, more than 500 yards total yep. just this season, right? We're on week two. Um, but I do agree with you. I think that your town is going to try to get this size advantage. And I think they're going to put a lot of heavy looks to try to force Rye to try to stack the box. But I think your town is going to have a lot of advantage up front. Run, to really move the ball, especially on the run. I think that it, their plan, and I, like I said, I don't have any insider track here. I don't know what your town's plan is, but if I was you know, in their shoes, I would try to you know, slow down, just, just overpower Rye because they've shown that defensively so far this season, they'll give the big plays and they might not be able to stop a heavy run offense when they have a size disadvantage. And Yorktown has the ability to do that uh, in spades. And, and from their defensive point of view, you know, they force some turnovers here. And obviously the secondary is going to get tested with this high-powered offense of Rye and A.J. Miller, but it, it's going to be a question of can they get to A.J. Miller before he carves you up. So the front seven, or really the front four, are going to have to make a lot of plays in the pass rush, and the secondary is going to get tested. So they got to see whether or not they will at least slow down these weapons and try to cause another turnover. Yeah, Morris, and, and for the game of the week, we obviously want to talk about some keys to the game. And you can kind of comment on the ones that I'm about to bring up. My first one is third down, right? And I'm looking at specifically Yorktown's offense versus Rise defense. And Yorktown's offense to me, Mars, and we didn't mention this in the they need to control time of possession of this game. Um, they need to dominate that time of possession because the less possessions you give Rye, the better chance you have to win. Um, because Rye, sooner or later, is going to find the end zone. And this Rye defense is on the opposite end. If you can get third down stops, it gives you the ball more. And if your offense has more opportunities, there's a good chance that you're going to find the end zone. Um, so that's going to be a big one for me. And number two is turnovers, right? We mentioned Yorktown's defense has been forcing a lot of turnovers. Rye has been pretty good at times. They've turned the ball over. Um, so let's see who wins that turnover battle is going to be huge. Mars, any thoughts on what I said? No, I feel like the biggest X factor for me are, are really the, the mat, I guess you would say, matchup. Um, 
is going to be the you know secondary of Yorktown versus the rise skill players and AJ Miller. I mean, like that's going to be the the battle for me because I Yorktown Yorktown's you know secondary was really impressive last week, forcing three turnovers, getting three ints, and AJ Miller has proven that he can carve you up, right? But the question is going to be. Who's going to win that matchup? Can the skill players of Rye really set themselves forward and A.J. Miller can make some big plays? Or will Yorktown secondary really slow them up? So that's going to be my biggest matchup when I'm looking at this game. Yeah, that's a pretty good one, but I'm going to go with a different one. I got the Rye defensive front seven versus Yorktown's my relish on this rush attack. Right, I, I think that's going to be an interesting matchup and one that is kind of under the radar. Um, my player to watch, Mars, talked about him a few times already. Quarterback Justin Myrellis of Yorktown. He has been a bell cow for them running the ball. He's gotten a lot of carries, a lot of touches. He's going to get a lot more in this game. Um, shifty, speedy guy. Um, so he's going to be huge for them. All right, Mars, those were the breakdowns. Let's do our game picks. And, uh, again, going into the game picks, Mars, we always have to, you know, whether we're going to celebrate week to week and uh, or by the end of the season. But last week, I was five and three on my picks. You were seven and one last week. So you beat me up a little bit. Lohud was six and two. So Mars was number one last week and I'm coming in third. So not very happy about that. But again, lose the, you know, lose the battle, but win the war at the end. So let's get into the game picks. First one up, Mars, Clarkstown North, one and one at John J. Cross River, who is 0 and two. Both these teams are 0 and one in league play. Both teams coming again, trying to turn the league play around. They've lost the league game last week. Clarkstown North, too many, again, too many run plays given up, too many rush yards given up last week. They had a tough time blocking uh, Luke Green out of Pelham. How are they going to respond this offensive line? And when I look at John J. Cross Rivermars, the big word to me is finishing. I mean, finishing drives, getting into the red zone and finishing those. They were up seven to six last week at halftime and blew the lead in the second half. They were up on Yorktown and blew that lead as well. So again, finishing the game, whether it's offensively finishing drives or defensively getting off the field, that's going to be the big word to me. Who I go with, I'm going to go with John J. Cross River. I do think being home is going to be huge. The crowd is going to be nuts. Look for Shapiro to have a bounce back game. In the pass attack, Zach Anino is another guy who draws a lot of the attention. One more guy to keep an eye on. Look for another, you know, X factor. Again, everyone talks about Shapiro, you know, Galea. Look for a guy like Savistano or Medicino, right? These are another guy, that other person who needs to step up and make a play. One of those guys are going to have to, and I do think they will. John J. Cross River wins as well. Yeah, I'm going to go with John J. Cross River as well. I feel like they, they're probably the, the best 0 2 team. <laughs> right now in, in all of class in all of section one to be honest with you they they have a lot of weapons they have a lot of good players I just think they played against two very good teams the first two weeks of the season and like you said before this, this is not the uh, this is not the end of John J. Cross River this is just they've been playing some really tough teams now the big question is how do they step up this coming week and I think they do step up big time they're going to show that they are not dead yet they have a lot of power a lot of energy left in them I'm going to go John J. Cross River now, I'm just going to also say this. This is not a do-or-die game for either team, but to be home, another league game at home, I think you got to win this one. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why I went cross -over. Second game, Clarkstown South, 1-0 at Lakeland, who is 2-0. We broke this game down. Mars, I think this is going to be a real interesting quarterback duel between Holder and Leonard. These wide receivers, again, Ali, Fatera, got Perry, Jennings on the other side. A lot of weapons on both sides, like a lot of good speed right here. This one was a tough one to pick, but I'm going Clarkstown South, and I think the difference, the factor here is going to be up front. I think South's uh, offensive line and defensive line will play a little bit better than Lakeland and give them a little bit more opportunities, especially running the football. And so I'm going to go with South on this one. I'm going to go with Lakeland. I think Lakeland's defense has actually been pretty impressive, and I think that they need – Kind of the you know to really step it up this week. I think offensively Lakeland has a lot of weapons. They have a lot of good players, and obviously South does as well. But I think the defense of Lakeland has the advantage. They're gonna have you know the you know, they're gonna at least slow down South a little bit enough to get Lakeland the advantage. It's gonna be a close game, but I'm gonna go Lakeland. Fox Lane 0 and 2 at Nyack, who is 0 and 1, is another league game. When I look at Fox Lane, Mars, there's just a grit to them when you watch them play. 
They're a grittiness to them. They're going to be a tough out no matter who they play. And when you look at Nyack Mars, they were up 14-0 on Lakeland last week, right? They got off to a start. The offense kind of stalled. So, again, which team is going to kind of finish? I'm going to go with Nyack, and I think the guy – who really I'm betting it on is their quarterback, Fowler. I think he made some plays last week. Again, this offense has to be more consistent. Um, Defensively, they were pretty strong in the beginning and then kind of let up. I think Nyack takes another step this week. I'm going to go with Nyack. I'm also going to go with Nyack. I think that they are another team that that played against very good squads, and I think they um, are kind of you know looking for that big win. They need to kind of p- come away with a solid overall performance um, from both sides of the ball here. And obviously, it's going to be led by Fowler. I think that is. I mean, obviously, Fox Lane is a gritty team. Yeah. I just think Nyack just has a little too much talent wise. I think I think they're going to win here. Let's go to Sleepy Hollow two and zero at Pelham, who is two and zero. Again, we broke this game down as well. Looking at both these squads, I'm going to go with Pelham. I think Pelham is going to win this game. I think they're a little bit bigger. I think they're a little bit more physical. Love the progress that I've seen from Sleepy Hollow, especially defensively. They have not given up a touchdown yet. That streak ends this time around. I'm going to go with Pelham. I'm going to agree. I think Pelham is going to win this game. I think Pelham has just more physicality. I think they're going to have more effectiveness running the ball. They're going to set the pace of the game. I'm going Pelham. Brewster 0-1 at Harrison, who is 1-1. Another tough league game, Mars. This one was a hard one to decide. I like the physicality that Brewster has. The tempo of Harrison is another intriguing one to me. Again, we're going to see. Can Harrison make enough pass plays efficiently to win this game? I think they do. Uh, you know, Brewster got a little bit beat up last week. Saw some guys go down. Not sure what the status is of them coming into this week. It's at Harrison. I do think that's going to be a factor. I think this game will be close. I feel like these Brewster-Harrison game. Especially last year, 2020 was another close one. I'm going to go with Harrison close, but Harrison's going to win. I'm also going to go with Harrison. I think Harrison is going to try to, you know, put the game more in their time possession. I think I even know they, they might change the pacing of this game to benefit them. I think they're going to slow it up, speed up, slow it up, speed up, and try to gain control. Get those, you know, those early yardage, right? Win the early downs and, and just control the clock, right? I think they're going to make the big plays when they need to. And I think they'll they'll definitely be more efficient. They were, what, nine for for 24? 24. Yeah, and I think I think they'll definitely be better than that. I think I think they throw less than 20 times. I Yeah, that's a, I think that they yeah. will throw less and be more efficient. And I think that will be what is more beneficial to them in the long run. I'm going to go with Harrison. Somers 1-0 at Eastchester, who's 2-0. Mars, we heard about Eastchester after their big win versus Maypac that they're looking at Somers coming in and they're not going to be afraid. Mm, this one's a tough one. Eastchester, I like the moxie that they have. I like the athletes that they have. Somers was rusty last week. How is the offense going to look this time around? Uh, I'm going to go with Somers, Mars. I don't think Eastchester. Um I love, again, the grit that they showed. I, they had a huge win against a big school in Mayapak. Nice upset to them, but Somers is a little different beast to me. And, uh, you know, I think offensively they're going to, again, rebound this time around. The defense is very strong for Somers. Even when the offense struggled last week, they shut down John J. Cross River, had a lot of weapons on that team in the second half. So I'm going to go with Somers. Again, I think they bounce back. Yeah, as you see, I think I'm going to give Eastchester some fire, right? I'm going to say Somers is going to win. Oh, I thought and you were, East Chester. Thought you were no, going to Listen, I, 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 I am going to give Eastchester a lot of credit. They proved a lot of people wrong. They surprised both of us, right? And they, I'm sure they surprised Low Hut as well. And a lot of people didn't think that they're going to win, right? They, 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 to be honest, size, based on size, numbers, and everything, they're not supposed to win that game against Mayapak. But they did, right? They made the upset, and I like, like you said, that they have fire in them, right? They say, "Hey, we're not giving, we're not going to just turn down, we're you know, not turn afraid. around, and like we're just good. get beat up by Somers. We're going to fight, right?" And I hope they give as much fight, and I hope this fires them up. The words of of Mars here fires you up to to say we are going to step it up even more because Mars and Frank both don't believe we can win. <laughs> because I, yeah, I think it'll be very it'll be a very interesting game if that you know if that happens. But I just think Somers just has too much. I think Somers yeah. had a lot of mishaps last week, and that's what made it a very close game. They had too many turnovers, but I don't think they're going to make the same mistakes. If they do, Eastchester could make a surprise, but I just don't think it's going to happen. I think Somers is going to win here. Let's go to the game of the week, Mars. Ride two and zero at Yorktown, two and zero. I'll let you go first on this last one, Mars. Who wins and why? 
Um, I think this is a very interesting game. I think the matchup here is, uh, and obviously it matches the game of the week level of two teams that are playing against each other. I think Rye, when you're looking at them, their offense is just high powered. I mean, yeah. I think the amount of skill players they have with you know the ability of their offensive line to move bodies around and just being the, the lethal quarterback of A.J. Miller has been super impressive so, uh, so far. Their defense is very young, but there was one thing I said in the beginning of the year was that their defense is going to get better as time goes on, right? Because they're a young team, they're going to get more experience and just get better overall. Yorktown is also extremely impressive. I think that they have a lot of weapons as well. Obviously, Justin Mirellis has been just a pure athlete, explosive 500 plus yards already um, and defensively they've been stout right turning forcing turnovers causing some issues for for opposing quarterbacks and, and wide receivers um, and the question is going to be which side will have just more of the momentum on their side uh, your town is at home but I'm going right I think AJ Miller is shown the grittiness as well as his offense in general to be down so many points and still keep fighting and find a way to pull off a W. And I think that grittiness, I don't think they're going to make a lot of mistakes like they did last week. I think they're going to be tightened up on the the efficiency and their defense is going to step it up. And I think the, the, the fact that they're just a young squad, they're going to get better and better. And I think this game, they're going to show that they are a top team in A. I'm going Rye. Tough one, right? Yorktown at home. The crop is going to be going absolutely wild. You know, it's not easy to win at Yorktown, right? The fans are going to be nuts. It brings that energy into that stadium. Wish I had a crop shirt. Someone's got to send me one over at the Yorktown spot. But Rye, again, on the road at Cornwall, on the road at Brewster, both pulling off victories. I am going to say this, and I said it before. If Rye doesn't come out of the gates firing, they're going to be in trouble. If they get down like they did against Brewster last week, I don't think it happens this time around where they make a comeback. So they are going to have to, again, be very efficient. How can they pull off another road win in a tough environment? I think they will, Mars. I agree with you. I'm going to go with Rye. And they're taking steps, right? This is going to be another thing. And I really like your town and their grittiness that they showed. But week zero, Mars versus John Jay Cross River, they gave up over 350 yards passing versus uh, John Jay. And so when I look at this Rye offense, if that offensive line that has been a pretty darn good job at pass protection gives A.J. Miller time, I think they're going to find some success throwing the football. Because, you, again, you look at your town's defense, they're also pretty young. They had a very impressive outing last week that they were stout, like you said. But there are some holes there. And until they sure it up, I do think Rye is going to make some big plays offensively. Question is, defensively for me. Can they stop my routes? I think they do just enough. This will be a high-scoring game. I'm going Rye, Mars. All right, everyone, that was our show. Thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to give that thumbs up and subscribe for future content. Please enjoy the games this weekend. We'll see you all very soon.